inside another dimension, face battling barbarians and evil magic on a quest for adventure in a maze of monsters. Once you get into it, you'll never be the same. Hero Quest. Now with two new adventure packs, the legend grows. Hi, welcome back to Nightmare of the Hobbies. Today we're going to look at probably one of the most anticipated miniatures from Dreadmoon, the Magus Knight. This guy is sick looking. Oh my god. Best sculpt in the box. Probably best sculpt out of all of the new miniatures, even from the core box, all the other expansions, everything. This is super cool. Elven Knight. Lots of stuff to love about this miniature. The pose, the armor, the concept art, the color scheme. Like, there's nothing to hate about this character, about this, this enemy. It's sad he's an enemy. I guess that's the thing you can hate is... It's an enemy. <laughs> but hey, who's to say you can't use this as your elf when you're not playing Dreadmoon? Hey, enough faffing about, let's get this guy painted. We're going to start here, unlike we did with the last character. We're going to start with the red first. We're going to do all the red first. Uh, and, and we're going to finish this cape proper before uh, doing everything else. We're going to dry brush it well before. But for starters, we're using our Blood Angels Red, and we're doing all the red stuff. So that's his little cape, his tacit down there. Uh, he has a plume on his helmet. Uh, and while I don't get it until later, he does have a little um, little tassel thing on the back end of his sword. So just go all around and get those big red spots. And this is a great opportunity to, if you make mistakes, clean them up. He's staying predominantly white for the beginning. Luxion purple. Now this area down here isn't purple in the concept art, but I thought to tie it back to the other elves that we've done, let's put some purple in there. So that's what I did. Uh, Basilicanum gray here for the back of the shield. You can notice I'm being pretty particular, but you don't have to be that particular because we are doing the gloves in the same Basilicanum gray. So at least when it comes to the back of the shield, you don't have to be too, too precise and come on it's the back of the shield you're not going to see it anyway uh we also have his chain mail he's got chain mail under his arm pitties as well as around his neck like a gorgian or or i guess it's his under armor here we go bold titanium white dry brush i told you it was coming way faster than it did in the last video we're doing this when everything is mostly white so that we don't have to uh, clean up anything later or be so, so scared that we're going to ruin the whole thing like I was, <laughs> even when I was doing it. Uh, but yeah, just go all around with that bold titanium white, getting the uh, the purple kind of loin armor as well as his hands and um, the, the red accents he's got. Now for the majority of this model is just painting all of the armor chrome. We're going to do a base coat of chrome around this whole guy. So put on some music, put on a podcast. It's going to get boring. <laughs> just take your time uh, and, and just go all around and hit all of the armor plating on this sucker with chrome. Your brightest uh, metallic silver that you've got. And he has a lot of armor on him. So just really eyeball it. Uh, reference the artwork to see what's what if you lose track and just go for it. Now he does have a couple little bits of gold. He does have a few other metallic parts to him. And so we're gonna pop that in with our Gulliman flesh contrast paint or whatever flesh kind of speed paint you got going on. We're also gonna do his ears coming in. And don't worry about that face inside. The ears are the big boys. We've also got gold on the bottom of his uh, sheath of his uh, his weapon. Now, I went probably a little off script to the sculpt, but this made sense to me, and I feel like it, it looked correct in the end. There's a lot of little filigree in there. Volupus pink. I like volupus pink, or any kind of pink, really, for a sheath of a sword, and I continued that here. Maybe in hindsight, could have done a different color kind of close to the red uh you do you maybe you want to do this snake bite leather or maybe you want to continue that luxium purple and that could be pretty cool as well 
for the uh, the sword sheaths. Up to you, but in hindsight, maybe the pink was a little too close. Eh, it still looks good to me. Frostheart here for an elven magic blade. You probably know by now, love me an elven magic blade. All right, so here we're using Talisar Blue thinned down. I probably could have thinned it down a lot more, and I probably will on the second uh, of these Magus Knights. But for this one, I did a two to one of contrast medium to Talisar Blue. So that's double contrast medium and single Talisar Blue. And I used that mix to go all around and to tint as well as recess wash all of the armor, all of his chromy silver armor. Now again, like I mentioned, probably gonna do on the second one, probably could have thinned it down a little more. I'll try that out. But for now, we work with it, we go with it, we got a solution later, and you'll see what we do. Go all around, I, I don't even mind on the face. You can see I just paint like right over. I'm, I'm getting right in there, <laughs> I'm not really caring. Because we can always fix that later. We can come back to it. And depending on what you're going for, tabletop or more or whatever, you're not even going to see the little eye slitties. Don't worry about it. We got Retributor Gold, my favorite gold, for all of our gold. Go all around, be careful the filigree, and just hit it where you see it. He's also got a little gold buckle, so don't forget about that one. Reichland Flesh Shade Gloss, out of print paint can't get it anymore i'm always gonna say it now mix a flesh shade or flesh wash gloss varnish or go flesh wash let it dry and then a gloss varnish whatever you'll do mix it up hit it like that that paint don't exist anymore you're lucky if you got it gunmetal now for all of the chain mail so not a lot but just his little arm pitties and his neck bit Nuln Oil Gloss, again another paint that does not exist anymore, so you do you with how you're going to do it. Either put it down, let it dry, hit it with a gloss, or mix it together, make your own. We're going to put that on the studs as well. Don't forget about those studs on the front of that little tacit thing. If you forget them, they're just going to look like white blah, little white blobs all on the front. You got to hit them with your metallic, you got to hit them with your gloss. And then we do our skin, he's only got ears. Super easy, hit those ears, get them done. Little bit of Cadian, little bit of Kislev, easy as pie. Coming in for the tippy tip tops of those ears, we got Pallid Witch Flesh, just hitting the pointiest bits of those elven ears, hitting them with those brightest skin highlights. We come around with Chrome once more, we got a lot to do with the Chrome. So buckle up, get ready. First things first, we're gonna hit all of our shiniest highlights on our golds and metals. So just the golds, I guess. Then we come around and we're gonna hit all of the raised detail to the armor. This is gonna take a long, long time. Be patient. Put a podcast on, like I said. Just strap yourself in, get comfy, and do all this tiny little detailing now it's not so bad with these guys because there's only two of them so you only got to do it two times if this were a whole army or whatever i'd be dry brushing the crap out of this <laughs> i would not be doing it this way but we've only got two guys so we can afford to spend a little extra time be a little more precise uh and and just go around making this guy look great so all those raised areas all those flat panel details Go all around with your smallest brush, your most patient listening playlist, <laughs> your steadiest hand, and just go for broke. Try it out. If you can't do it, well, I got a surprise for you. Because uh, <laughs> by the time I was done this, I felt like it was too blue still. And so we hit it with dry brush anyway, and you'll see that coming up. But for now, you see I'm going over all these little flat panel details all the raised edges and we're getting him chromed the heck up this helmet was really fun there's a lot of cool little details on there and you can see it really come to life as we start to re-add that chrome in there so here you can see if you're happy with that 
great. I, I like I said earlier, <laughs> probably could have thinned down that Talazar blue a little bit more. It was still just a little too punchy of blue. So I went in and I dry brushed. And you can see I'm stabbing it as well. And I'm, I'm not doing kind of the edge dry brush you normally see. I'm really going in and pushing in and, and even stabbing and kind of going around and rubbing with contact, like consistent continual contact in there. And that's because I want some of the metallic flaking to go into those cracks. I want to brighten it up uh, because it just was too dark blue for me. And then here, if you want to do the face, that's why it's an extra touch. Get some paint. I chose a white because it's super easy. Get in there, paint in the little eye and the nose, um, and then do our hair highlights. And of course, dry brush our magic sword. Do not forget that magic sword. There you see it. Dry brushed, hit it up, <laughs> get it magicked. And, uh, and if your visor crease has been all whited up, all you gotta do is put gullum and flesh over and boom, you're done. It's shadowed anyway. And we finish them up with our usual basing technique. Gray paint, texture paint, dry brush, wash, and dry brush. And there you have it. Look at this dude. Look at this dude. He's so cool. <laughs> He's absolutely awesome. I can't get enough of him. The Magus Knights in this pack are by far the coolest Hero Quest miniature from the relaunch. Hands down. These guys are sick. And you don't have to do them with this blue magic armor as well. If you wanted to do them with a sterling silver, that's probably closer to the concept art. But I like going <laughs> magic blue. I like going all kind of mystical, ethereal with these guys. And that's how we got it. I hope it was well worth the wait. I know that the Dread Moon miniatures, not many people have been doing painting tutorials or showing off their, their kits online. It's an expansion that has a lot of unique and kind of one-off miniatures. So there's still a lot more to come that's going to be interesting and cool. Those mercenaries, for one, the Elven Mercs, they're going to be really interesting with all of their you know unique looks and fiddly bits and lots going on with those guys. If you like the video, give me a little thumbs up, a little likey. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on, on Dreadmoon so far, on this miniature specifically. If you want to support me, check out the Patreon. Uh, we got a uh, members-only Discord if you want to take part. It's pretty cool. It's a burgeoning community. A couple people in there. We're having some fun. We're dropping some behind-the-scenes action all over. And yeah, check out my Twitch for some gaming content. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one for more HeroQuest Dreadmoon action. Bye-bye!